Right, so we're back at Rick's workshop today. He's going to be helping us through building the 650 motor up. Now, last time we made quite a lot of progress. Um, we got the crank fully assembled after we were waiting on our sludge trap cap. Got the cases together and uh, also got the gearbox and the outer cover on as well. So today we need to start thinking about pistons, we need to start thinking about barrels and heads, things like that. Right, so today uh, we need to carry on from where we were at last time, uh, which is going to mean we need to get our pistons in place. So I've got the low compression pistons, uh, this is standard Thunderbird stuff, and that should work for me pretty well. Now we've gone ahead and stuck the base gasket on there already because otherwise it would be fiddly to go over the top of the pistons. So we've also got our push rod tubes um, set up with the seals just kind of drying in place because we've popped a little bit of silicone on there. Yeah, I think it was worth bearing in mind that you, when you've got seals like this and you're going to put some silicon gasket sealant on there, silicon is actually a lubricant as well. Mm. So if you put it all together and bolt it down with fresh silicon on there, cause it can happen, they slide out. So mm. my way of doing it is usually just to put silicon on one side of the seal, just leave the tube on it to hold it down, leave that to set for a day or something like that, and you yeah. know it's glued to it. Yeah, cool. And then you can put the silicon on the on the tube for the other half of it when you're assembling it. So. Yeah, and then they can meet in the middle, can't they? Exactly, yeah. Right, so, should we go ahead and get our pistons on? Yep, reckon so. Cool. <laughs> fitted and our pistons as well um, everything's looking really, really smart there i've also gone ahead and put the primary back together that's had a really good clean because that was full of water when we got it and everything was quite rusty but actually everything's usable and it's cleaned up really really well so now we has been a couple of days we fast forward in time that silicone is set it's time to get our push rod tubes in place and also the head as well <laughs> Substantial progress has been made. In fact, this is starting to look suspiciously like a complete motor. Um, we've popped the head on, but not only that, we've been doing some other little bits and bobs. Pop the uh, chain case on as well. Now that will have to come off uh, once I've made up a cable for the clutch. I'll have to chew up the clutch and make sure that's operating properly, but it's on there for now. The timing cover is also on, which means the timing has been decided on. Now, that was a right headache and there were lots of numbers involved, and it really, really confused me, so I was very much glad to have Rick's help. Yeah, we uh, weren't quite sure what the cams were in, in the bike. We've got numbers on the cams, but um, the Thunderbird has softer cams than the Bonneville's and things like that. Mm. And we just thought it might be good to just check the valve timing on it and see, and uh, it actually turned out it's not Bonneville cams, it's not Thunderbird cams, but it's kind of early Bonneville cams. Oh. So a slightly different timing that, that confused us both for a little while. Yes. But, uh, 
partly because we'd set it up on the Thunderbird marks and it should have been on the Bonneville marks yes. and blah blah. So, so we've worked that out, so we know we've got early Bonneville cans in it, so it should go fairly well really. Yeah, so for those of you that are confused by that, on the timing gear there's actually two marks, one for Bonnie and one yeah. for Thunderbird, and it was a little bit, which one do we choose, but we worked it out now. Yeah, it's kind of funny because the inlet cam is timed like the late Bonnevilles, so that figure would have been right, but yeah. we got it on the wrong mark. And the exhaust cam isn't timed like the right, right bon late Bonneville, so that was right mark, but the wrong timing. So that's yes, the time. yeah. But, but we've out. met in the middle and got somewhere, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So I think we've been to pick up the uh, rolling chassis. I think it's probably about time we chucked it in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. You might be right. You might I was be right. say you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of us is right, that's the question. I just can't recall. I remember thinking something about the rear engine plates and thinking, oh, yes, it is. I think you might be right about this because the, my feeling is that it is obvious it would go in front high and come down. But I think on that ground, that's what we did last time. Yeah. And it proved to be wrong. Yeah. It was definitely the opposite of what we tried first of all. I think so. Be through the other side, I think. Mm -hmm. So we're going down. Right, so the engine is now in the frame and I have to say it is looking rather magnificent. Now Rick and I did have a little go um, sort of seeing which way the motor would go in. We both forgot which way it should go in, and we trusted me, but I got it wrong. Rick was right. Regardless, it is now in there and uh, looking very pucker indeed. So next up, we're gonna fit the uh, push rods and the rocker boxes as well. Now, rocker box gasket wise, uh, we've actually gone with a copper gasket. Pete from Brit Steel Classics recommended me these uh, when we were doing my 500 Triumph, and they have been marvelous. So yeah, I'll be very glad to use those again. If you think back to the very first episode that we started doing engine work or anything to do with the engine on this bike, you remember I had to cut off those horrible Mazak rocker caps. Um, I've got those replaced with these nice alley ones, which are very of the time. And uh, I think they'll look very, very well indeed. Yeah, so let's pop those on there and we'll see how they So we've roared ahead, we've got our rocker boxes on, our nice new rocker caps, um, and they're retained nicely by these little tangs here. These ones have actually got nice little indents on them that work in conjunction with these tabs, so that's really, really nice. Sometimes you don't get that with the aftermarket ones. What else have we done? Um, the coil brackets are fitted as well. Now, obviously, this is not something that would be too difficult to make at all, but I didn't have one to copy, and they're quite cheap. So we've ordered them put them on as well. We've also got our rocker feed ready to go. Points are on as well. Um, things are looking very complete, but I think it's about time we've already wheeled it out to the garden and had a little look around for the first time um, with the motor really looking much more complete and just as more of a complete motorcycle. So me and Rick are gonna get this off the bench and uh, we'll wheel it out over by the hedge. So you can buy like off-road yeah. bikes as such and yeah. then figuring out the old off-road bikes. We thought, oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> no stopping it, because we're talking no stopping it. We've got no, that's true. I'll be the brake. I'll that's it, well done, yeah. Throw yourself myself. under the wheels. I will. It feels highly unnatural, not having a... Or even clutch to act as a dead man's brake. No, that's true. Oh, there we go. Stop wheels coming off. 
Right, so we've wheeled her out into the garden um, and put her in the exact same spot that she was in under a year ago. I bought this uh, April time last year and uh, it's early Feb now, so already in under a year we managed to get it to this state and I have to say it's looking really, really well. It looks exactly how I wanted it to. It's got a very statesy look about it. Um, and I think it's quite mental to think it's come this far in such a short period of time, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a crazy thing, really. You get a thing that looks as bad as this did, and you know, obviously, it's a great thing to have. But mm. where are you going to go with it? How are you going to find the parts, all that kind of stuff? But it just seemed to fall into place, really, didn't it? It's yeah, yeah. And very much the older troubles get overshadowed by the newer troubles. Yeah. Whilst working on the motor, we've already forgotten that when this came to my hands, it was horribly bent up in the frame, and we had to, we <laughs> spent a great deal yeah. of time straightening that out and. There's been lots of fabrication work and finding parts and things like that. So that's the trouble, and it's part of the it's part of the addiction with it, really. That you yeah. sort of go through stuff, you know, oh, never again, man. But then yeah. all of a sudden you think, oh yeah, well, anyway, that's all dealt with. Now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Off. Yeah. And to be honest, when you you step back and look at it, and it looks like this, you just think it doesn't really matter any of it, does it? Really? No, it's that's all it. Worthwhile. Yeah. It's all worth it. That's yeah. absolutely. And right. such a nice feeling to think, yeah, you could have gone out and bought something, but you've taken something that had been lying in the garden for years and have pretty much gasped its last and now it's already this yeah. far on the road and we're not even up to a year yet. So. That's it and I also have the benefit of knowing how the motor goes together, problems to look for and having something that I know intimately and money just can't buy that can it? No that's right and I mean part of having a bike like this is you know yes you can have a load of money you can go and buy one but if it breaks down you don't know anything about it yeah. then you're kind of stuck don't you really so that's it's, it. it's it's much better to start and do it the poor man's way, if you like, and just build it up yourself, learn about it as you go, Then, if you have any problems, you're gonna know where to look for them. So yeah, I think it's exactly. a great leveler in that sense, you know? Yeah, exactly that. So we've come along leaps and bounds today. I mean, this particular episode has taken us probably about two weeks to get this far, um, just working the odd couple of days here and there. We still got a few things to do. Obviously, we need a carburetor, we need some exhaust, we need cables, things like that. But hopefully, in the next episode, we might be thinking about firing it up. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, I'll right. get it out of my workshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, I'll gladly put it in mine. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks very much for watching today, guys. And uh, if you're looking forward to seeing this and you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I will see you in the next episode.